Howdy folks, and welcome to the Modern Horror Improv Theater, where um, we're going off script today. But I wanted to, uh, to talk frankly about the Paranormal Activity series, uh, of which I am a fan. That's uh, currently five films of varying quality. Um, you know, some of these are really good. Some of these are absolutely stupid. And I did want to talk about, eventually talk about all the movies. Uh, but each movie will get its own video, and for the sake of sanity, I'll probably be switching to other movies between each Paranormal Activity video. But, here we are with Paranormal Activity 1, the, uh, the movie that started it all. Paranormal Activity 1, written and directed by Oren Pelly, um, former software engineer who moved to, uh, to California, and this was apparently his first time really living alone in, 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 in this house, and he thought it was really creepy. Uh, and he was really scared at night, so he tried to kind of channel that into into the movie that would eventually become Paranormal Activity. So Oren Pelly did a bunch of, of research on on hauntings and demons and, and all that sort of thing, and he spent about a year redecorating and, and remodeling his house to shoot the movie in. And they shot the movie in 2006, 2007, uh, in about a week, and put it on the festival circuit. It got hugely popular. Uh, I first saw the movie in 2009 when it got a nationwide theatrical release and it was it was a great experience um the saw movies the saw franchise was kind of coming to its end there were maybe maybe one or two movies left in saw in 2009 when this came out uh and saw had just gotten uh into a complete exercise in ridiculousness uh it was just so over the top and, you know they were fun to watch but um, it was nice to have something different, and Paranormal, Paranormal Activity was that something different. It was, it was slow and kind of creepy and very tense, and, and instead of the fast-paced more, more, more action that, that Saw was doing, Paranormal, Paranormal Activity was like, you know, we're gonna sit here and we're just gonna show you something, and it'll be strange, and, and hopefully you'll get kind of freaked out by it, which was um, definitely a nice approach. So. I've been watching all the all the Saw movies throughout later high school and college, um, and Paranormal Activity kind of picked up and, and filled that traditional October horror theater experience uh, after after I moved out. As to the movie itself, Paranormal Activity, and I think one of the reasons that I'm doing these improv reviews is because the scripted reviews are, are so hard to write because there's almost no story. At least in the first one, there's almost no story. It's the simplest story. It's the oldest story we have. It's something something spooky going bump in the night. You know, half the scary stories are just variants on it. So Paranormal Activity is this young couple, Katie and Mika, who move in together. And she's had a history of things creeping around at night and doesn't know what they are. And Mika, being the, the enterprising and, and caring boyfriend that he is, decides to take it upon himself to grab a camera and try to figure out what it is. Unfortunately, Mika is incredibly annoying. And that's one of the, the huge criticisms that I've heard about this movie, is, is that Mika is just such a douche and you're so annoying, but... I've always countered that, that Mika's douchey, dude bro annoyingness comes from being a decent human being and just kind of sucking at it because in a lot of found footage movies in a lot of horror movies you get the character that puts up a big front but as soon as the shit hits the fan they're only looking out for number one and and they just take off they run away they betray their their friends or their family or their girlfriend or whatever um but mika never does that mika seriously literally will fuck up the legions of hell because they pissed off his girl he will go down there and punch Lucifer himself in his left nut because he offended Kate. And that's a huge redeeming quality uh, that I think Mika has because he really cares. And, and that's why he's doing all of this. He's being incredibly stupid and, and kind of pig-headed and selfish about it, but he actually really seems to give a shit. So, okay, so back to the story. Um, yeah, so, so they move in together and Mika buys this camera and the whole movie is just this series of, of nights and days and it's captioned and spread out so it's not like 
you know, five days right in a row. You know, the whole thing takes place over one week. I think it goes up to like night 23 or some, some really high number like that. Um, and he buys this camera and they set it up on a tripod in their bedroom. So every night we get something of escalating creepiness uh, happening from the, the static tripod shot. And then during the day they tool around with the camera and the daytimes are the, the kind of ramifications of whatever happened overnight. So if something really, really intense happens overnight, they're really, really freaked out during the day. And it, it builds like that, but there's no sense of, of the end game. There's not a traditional story arc here. It's just this sequence of things happens and the action gets more and more tense. And then it just sort of stops, um, which I don't think is, is a failing of the movie. It was just unexpected when I saw it like that. Another thing that I think the movie was, was really, really good at is kind of keeping the scope of everything down. Uh, and I think part of that has to do with the budget. Part of it also has to do with Pelly doing real world research and basing all of this stuff on real world reports. Um, however true you might think those are, but it kept things from getting so outlandish. There's a lot of a lot of movies. Last Exorcism was one movie where they ended it with uh, you know this country preacher coming out of the woods with with his Bible and his cross facing down like a literally 20 foot tall Satan. Devils do that had that crazy cult battle, multiple members and explosions. And it, it was it was loud and it was fire and it was ridiculous. Uh, similar thing with. The Marked Ones, Paranormal Activity spinoff. They had some ridiculous stuff happening at the end of this. Like at one point, uh, the character disappears into like an interdimensional rift and all the furniture of the room gets sucked in with them and just vanishes. And it's like, that's nowhere near realistic. But Paranormal Activity, you know, it starts off with like the keys fall off the counter. And you know, that's pretty low key. And like the worst thing that happens uh, on camera is, you know, Katie being dragged out of bed by something unseen, which is pretty incredulous, but it's the most incredulous thing that happens. That's the high watermark of, of, you know, having to suspend your disbelief for this movie. And everything else is something you might be able to explain. It's something that might be happening, or at least the first couple of things, you know, keys falling, things being not where you left them, strange thuds, weird shadows. You know, these are the realistic things that probably scared all of us as kids, which is why I think it resonated with the, the movie-going audience uh, that saw it as adults. Just the real scares, the real primal fears of shadows and things in the night that you can't see. Um, Another thing I'll give the movie credit for is its handling of the camera. For the creepy scenes, it's on that tripod in the bedroom. It's got a wide angle lens so you can see just a whole ton. And it's just the static shot and it's like one of those things you're, you're kind of looking at it and you're trying to figure out what's going to happen. You don't really know where the thing is coming from, but you're building yourself up and you're getting more and more tense trying to look at all the little corners and it's like, oh, those two lights might be eyes or is it just a reflection? I don't know. Um, and you're just working yourself up for it until the movie finally delivers what it's decided is gonna happen in the scene, which may be completely different than, than what you were expecting was gonna happen. That, that static shot is really good for, for really building a lot of tension um, and letting the audience, letting you as a viewer kind of get working yourself up, which is always scarier than, than the movie just showing you what you're supposed to be afraid of. And Chris Carter has said similar things for The X-Files, never showing you what you're scared of. And also, as per more of the handling of the camera, when they're not using the static shot, when they're not in night vision at night, um, they actually put the camera down. You can build a character around the guy who's holding the camera most of the time, which not a lot of other found footage movies actually do. Another one of the things that they do with the camera in this movie that I think is really good is putting the camera down during during the day. So you can see the characters that are doing stuff that isn't necessarily related to the plot, but sort of fills them in as people. I think a lot of these other movies are used to the more traditional camera work, more traditional schools of cinematography, where you have, you know, your camera can kind of be wherever it needs to be or do whatever it needs to do. 
And when they go and they try to apply that to a found footage movie, they just, you know, kind of make it shaky and don't don't put it in anything creepy or do any any really cool moves because and you know have people talk to it because it's just supposed to be somebody holding it, but they actually kind of neglect to give the person holding the camera an actual character and just make them the cameraman and sort of acknowledge that it's there as opposed to really, really treating the scene like there's a camera there, which I think Paranormal Activity activity did really well. And another thing too was because they were really just treating the camera like it was another object in the scene as opposed to the thing that was the most important thing in the scene because that's where the audience sees through. They wouldn't necessarily always point it at the most interesting thing that was happening in the room, which kind of makes it more realistic. You know, you always hear this criticism in these found, in found footage uh, nowadays where, you know, why are they pointing that there? Why are they filming this? And, you know, the answer usually ends up being because this is what we need to see as an audience but that just doesn't make sense inside the world of the film, which is really, really important for suspending your disbelief for these found footage movies. So when they're not showing you everything in Paranormal Activity or when it's kind of cocked and pointed to the corner or, you know, Mika has put it down for whatever reason and you just kind of got to figure out what's going on or all you can like see is people's feet or something, it just makes a lot more sense and it feels a lot more real. Really? Good use of the camera to let the audience scare themselves. Actually building character for the guy holding the camera. Really good up and down tension. It wasn't pegged all the time. You'd have moments to recover and then it would go at you again. Really good at keeping the spectacle down and keeping it to real things that you could imagine yourself happening. Yeah, so that's that's basically the gist of Paranormal Activity. There's not a lot to talk about plot-wise, but it's got some decent concepts because it does found footage so much better than than the found footage movies that have come more recently it did the reason i think it was so successful is because it did found footage so well and that just really resonated with people and the horror fan thing coming off of saw and its ridiculousness and going into something more reality based like this um yeah so stay tuned for the next uh, the next review will not be Paranormal Activity, but the review after that will be Paranormal Activity. Um, so stay tuned for that. Subscribe below if you're interested or follow Build Environment on Facebook or Twitter. Cheers.